You know, you and your brother are a perfect representation of NFL and football, so we love every single step of the way of your growth and obviously exposure to the world. You, you're the right one. You're the right one to represent us, Travis. Hell yeah. You need to know you're that. Already, hey, you're, I've been a Pat McAfee show listener for since day one, baby, so I've seen the growth amongst this show as well. So you already know I'm a big fan of the show as well. And Boston Connor said it best, man. It's just those Ohio folk, baby. There it is. You know, a little yeah. sibling banter. How can you how can you get mad at that? Yeah, right now there's two Ohio folks, okay, on mm -hmm. the show. And uh, if you know anybody from Ohio, you know exactly what that means. And it's an awesome thing that the world's <laughs> getting to learn about it. Travis, let's chat a little bit about your team here. So, you know, going through the year, and I heard you say it after you you guys won the AFC Championship, you said the Chiefs is still the Chiefs. There was a lot of times this year where people were wondering that. And obviously, the standard of the Chiefs is the standard that you guys have built and brought to that beautiful kingdom over there over the last few years. What was it you think this year, trying to find your way? Were you trying to adapt to a new team? Did you guys feel it inside the locker room? What, what was yeah. it about the road this particular year as opposed to years past, you think, Travis? I mean, you saw it. You saw it. We just didn't win football games, and it was the uh, there were big moments in games that we typically make the plays, or at least the, our history has showed that we've made those plays. And um, this year, it was just a little bit uh, a little bit different. You know, we were just off uh, a tick here and there. Um, guys pointed at the wide receiver room. They pointed at you know how old my ass is getting. <laughs> um, they pointed at a few different things, and it's just. Uh, persevering through that knowing in our heart and our in our minds when we walk in the building we see we have everybody we need to get back to the super bowl and um it's just having that might that that right mind frame and that and uh being able to you know make those plays when needed uh and to to really i don't know get us over that stepping stone and back into the super bowl man yeah your old ass when the lights get bright it seems to you know have the right mind frame <laughs> every single time go ahead aj Trav, I know you guys have kind of crossed over into that space to where you've you've won too much. You, you've won so much that people want to hate you or people want to see you lose, and they say, oh, I just want to see somebody else get a chance or whatever. Like, first off, how good does that feel <laughs> that you guys are in that echelon? Because it's very, very difficult to get there. And also, though, like, how much juice has it given you and the rest of the team to where you guys, it feels like, yeah, we love going on the road. We love kind of embracing this villain role. Man, I'll tell you what, I – um. It was about, I want to say, towards the uh, the later part of the season. And um, Charles Amenahu, who, um, man, my heart goes out to him. Uh, get an opportunity. He's going to, unfortunately, miss the opportunity to play against his old team in the Super Bowl with his ACL injury. Um, and we're going to go ahead and try and get it for him. But I told him, I was like, he he came up to me and said, man, where's that where's that Chiefs offense I'm used to seeing where you guys just put up and blow up, blow out everybody? And I was just like, man, this is just a different world, man. We got to become that, that team that has the grit. And has the fire in their heart to be able to find ways to win at the end of ball games, man. We just gotta we gotta feed that beast and turn turn that into being, you know, the villain of the NFL. And sure enough, man, we're uh we're right back to the Super Bowl with that kind of mentality, man. Now remember, you guys, well, Patrick mostly, but I guess your entire team, you guys hadn't had to play a playoff game on a road. No. Yeah. Nope. Now the Super Bowl has never been hosted in Kansas City, you know, and you guys right. have played there no. a few times. But going into Buffalo with the snow and how it all was, it felt, watching you guys, it's almost like you guys were excited for the opportunity to play a playoff game on the road. And then going oh, into man. Baltimore, and obviously we talked about the Tucker situation, and you chatted about how <laughs> the mindset of the whole week of me and Patrick was like, we're not joking around. Like, we are uh -huh. we are in, uh, we are coming into Baltimore, and I think the film will show it. We actually have a In the Trenches later where AQ is going to break down you guys were the aggressors that entire game pretty much. Feels like that has been a mentality, and AJ kind of alluded to it there, about playing on the road and stealing happiness from other people and then maybe bullying the bullies. That's not what the Chiefs have been known for at all. Did you guys talk about that? Was there like oh, yeah. full – Okay, all right, so you guys did talk it about it. It was a mind frame 100%, and Coach Reed challenges uh, the guys every single week uh, to be at their best, and no more does he challenge the – there's no greater group that he challenges more than the guys up front on both the offense and defensive line to set that tempo of physicality. And uh, going into Buffalo, we knew it was going to be a hostile environment. And we just accepted that challenge like it was like uh, it was just the, the biggest thing in our lives, man. And you could feel everybody in the building rally together and have that same mind frame. And then we did the same thing going into Baltimore Um and uh, if you watch Baltimore on film all year, man, those guys are getting after it. You know, a little, a little bit extra after the play to kind of, you know, show their dominance, act like they're the alpha males and, uh, you know, 
how do you go in and and and, and you just got to punch them in the mouth? You know, that's the, that's the at the end of the day, you got to go in there and when teams try and you know uh, strong arm you or be the tough guy, uh, sometimes you just got to show them that you're not going to back down. And um, speaking of the Tucker stuff, everybody's having a blast with that stuff. Obviously, uh, it was fun um, knowing that we won the game and then Tucker had to just kind of chew everything that he was doing and, and swallow that. Um, I loved every bit of that. Pat, I did. I, I, I moved his stuff about as politely as I could. I saw. OK, I, I, I could have thrown his helmet about 50, 50 yards into the stands if I really wanted to you know, make a point. But. Um, I knew it was just friendly banter at that point. And he was just trying to be a dick about it. But, um, yeah, I think that mentality of going in there, not messing around and making sure we we take the fight to them because of how physical of a team they are and how and how hard they play uh, throughout the game. Did you wear the all black on purpose, too? I saw the, uh, you know, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris, Jones, Chris Jones made it made sure to tell everybody, make sure you're wearing all black this week. Hey. We're going in there. We're going to hit the bank like Chiefs of Hollick, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching in jail somewhere right now. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I, I did have my impact on the game. Where's my wolf mask? <laughs> uh, last question for me before the boys have some, and obviously we're all massive fans, and mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, Travis, and I said at the beginning about you being a superstar, like obviously you're a vet, you've been around a long time, you've earned over $100 million in the league, you're – you just passed Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. You just passed Jerry. Right? Damn, Most good. catches in the Great. playoffs. Like you're, you've obviously accomplished a lot. Been around a long time. You're mature. Like your mindset is one that is ready for it. But like this year, was there ever a moment where it was like, damn, everything? I'm. Uh, you're obviously, you know, the New Heights podcast through the like universe seemingly to everywhere on earth great for football and obviously we're massive fans of the show then you and taylor become like literally the couple that every human on earth is talking about it used to be like the kardashians Mm -hmm. and like paris hilton and them like when we were growing up that was that type of stuff now it's you're in the middle of that all the while (laughs) in the middle of a dynasty as well with the Kansas City Chiefs. Was there ever a moment where you had to like just like sit down and be like, man, there's a lot going on right now? Or have you been able to kind oh, of yeah. nav- navigate it all? How, how has it kind of gone? 100%. This yeah. 100%. I had to kind of reel it back. And because it's all, uh, it's uh, everybody in this building knows my intentions, man. Football is, is my main focus right now. There's a lot of people counting on me in this building, in this city, in this organization. So this is, this is my number one focus at the time to be able to, you know, uh, and on top of that, I have a, it's in my heart to be able to pour everything I got out there on the field. And, uh, you know, there's, there's some perceptions and, and people can perceive what they want, but I wanted to make sure that the guys and the men and women in this building knew that, uh, that I was 100% focused on, on, on this team and getting this team to where we are, uh, where we're going next week. And, um, 100% I had to look back, uh, take a step back and really see how I was, uh, you know, portraying myself to the world. And just to make sure that everybody knew I was focused um, all while uh, still enjoying um, my life off the field. Yeah, and being a gentleman through it all, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, yeah. hey, being a ge- hey, you're representing football right now, you know. And I don't want to talk all about. Brian, I don't want to talk about your relationship because we are a sports program, but your relationship has ca- crawled into the sports world. It's like we've all learned about. Taylor Swift, like I did not know a lot about her. My wife is a massive fan of her work and her stories and everything and following her career. It's like we have been so pumped that like a football guy, like, hey, <laughs> yeah. this is a, you, you know, like a gentleman, like mm-hmm. chivalry, what? like not scared to be potentially in like somebody else's spotlight as well. Like it is, it's been beautiful to watch, Travis. We're all incredibly pumped. I appreciate it, brother. We're pumped for you, buddy. Thank yeah, you, yeah. We're, just, we're just trying to reel in the good ones one one at a time, baby. Just yeah. win everyone over. I love that. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Travis, you mentioned the all-black outfit going into the bank this weekend. There's actually a uh, list, kind of a montage of the GQ Sports and the NFL put out on their Instagram, and it was the best dressed players of 2024, 2023 to 2024. And you just so happen to be on there. You are also the only white guy on there. Uh, how do you feel to be, you know, <laughs> thank kind you. of representing? Hey, once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you just feel to be represent, representing? Baby. Yeah. 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 
Do you already have Represent your Represent for the culture? Yeah. <laughs> you got your fit planned out for Super Bowl already? Do you already know what you're wearing there um, as well? I got I got a few I got a few different things that uh that I got in the closet that I might pull out, but you already know, man. We're in Vegas, baby. The lights are on, man. You might see me in a in a Sinatra, oh. in, a, in a Elvis Presley. You might see me in I, I might have to bring out all the bells and whistles for this one. Oh man. I cannot wait to see the glasses that are going to be side of it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those things are going to be absurd. Yeah. yeah. The glasses are going to be absurd. Top hat you look us. good, though. Hey, a lot of people look like assholes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have, like, you still have, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've had my I've had my point. I've had my days where I've looked like an asshole, for sure. For yeah, sure. but that's going to happen in fashion. Yep. That's, that's going to happen, that's gonna happen in rocking. fashion. But you, you've you hit. You've made solid contact on a lot as opposed to missing. We're proud of you, buddy. AQ has got a good football question. <laughs> Yeah, Trav, so all year you you turn on the film and it's teams try and handle you in a variety of different ways. It's either jam, help, chipping you off the line of scrimmage, it's double coverage, it's man coverage. They've tried everything and nothing works. How are you always open? <laughs> Great, question. Question. Great question. Great question. Hey, tell us this uh, 10 days before the Super Bowl. Too, yeah, please. Please. yeah. Well, AQ, I wish I was as open as uh, you're making it seem in the 2020 Super Bowl that uh, you guys gave me a very uh, humbling oh! experience in. Um, I'll tell you what, though, and congratulations on that. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's been an absolute honor to play in Coach Reed's offenses, man. Um, I've, I'm, I've been on cue saying Coach Reed could get my dad open uh, in the NFL, man. The way he schemes things up. He your dad's a dog, on, though. We learned a lot about your dad. Team. His dad's a dog. Big Ed is a dog. He is a dog. <laughs> and... Um, He's got he's got some mischief in his in his back pocket. He'll make sure he uh, he tricks everybody to get open. But either way, Coach Reed has done an unbelievable job of uh, of kind of like I don't know letting letting me grow in this offense. And um, on top of that, Pat Mahomes, man, he could put the ball anywhere. He could throw somebody open in a heartbeat. So uh, I'm just a product of my environment, man. But um, definitely trying to uh, take the game. Uh, to another level by uh, in the tight end room, at least. Yeah, and I, I would say you're doing that, pal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the conversation about greatest of all time is happening around you, has been for a few years. That's why at the beginning of your relationship, a lot of the Swifties going like, Taylor's making this guy famous. It's like, Slow down. greatest tight end of all time. Obviously, a new generation of humans are meeting him. Do you like that or don't like that you're in that great? I assume you have to like that, but... Is it I mean, something? It's it's yeah, an absolute right. honor, you know it, man. You know it, and I've uh, I've taken bits and pieces of all the guys that have I've been you know mentioned in that group with, like Tony. I've taken a lot from his game. Gronk, I've taken so much from his game. Um, a guy like Antonio Gates has fueled me, fueled me with confidence in how I played um, and how he played. Uh, there's just so many different guys that I've taken bits and pieces from, um, and just kind of try to you know create this ultimate tight end that. That uh, or at least the uh, the best tight end that I can be uh, for my team, and um, yeah, it's just, it's an absolute honor. That's for damn sure. Yeah, well, you've earned it all. AJ, go ahead, pal. Trap, did did you have any idea? I guess when you, or let's say, eighteen months ago, two years ago, do you have any idea? Like when everything with your podcast, obviously, relationship that everyone wants to talk about, do you have any idea it would be this? I knew, I'm sure you thought, okay, this is going to be something, but now does it feel like this is? Oh, I was not. Uh, I was not anticipating how this kind of has played out, but it's got to be fun, and exciting at the same time. Yeah, it's 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 exciting for me, but it was all brand new, man. I I couldn't tell you. I mean, I've from having the paparazzi follow me every single day into work to, <laughs> you know, just uh, everybody having their having my name on their talk show every single day, whether it's sports, whether it's not sports. Uh, you know, it's just been a, it's been a crazy, crazy ride. I could have never anticipated, man. But um, I'm having fun with it. The majority of the world is having fun with it outside of all the cranky NFL fans that just don't want to see <laughs> nah, them win. It's coming um, around. So, they thought so, yeah. you were fake. They and, thought you were fake. And you know fake. what? We're slowly reeling them in. Yep. We're slowly reeling yep. them in. They just they, – they, they're fighting it right now. You know, what, you know what I think it was? I think we all – like, because you told – thank you for doing what you did, by the way. You were like – yeah, I would like to invite Taylor to the game or whatever. At that point, I assume you knew she was coming. I assume you knew she was coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys knew each other pretty well at that stage. I mean, that was the first time she was going to watch you play, but you guys knew each other pretty well at that point. Yeah, we had we had knew each other uh, for close to a, close to a month up to that point. And t pretty pretty good constant. So it was yeah, it wasn't just a out of the blue. Hey, come to the game and enjoy. The game. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, good. Not just like an open call, but we we were a part. Yeah. Of, very thankful that you uh -huh. allowed us to be a part of that. And I think like getting a chance to know you and kind of watch the entire thing. 
Like, I was so happy for you. And I think, like, a, at learning about Taylor from her thing, I was, like, so happy for her, too. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is going to be – this seems like the perfect almost relationship. Yep. And then both the football people – Hey. hey, how are you? Hey, Justin Tucker was going to beat your ass, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to beat your ass. You know that. Hey, Pat, he's going to beat your I, ass. I'll tell you, but Pat, me and, me and Patrick were on the sideline in the fourth quarter when Tucker had that chance to cut the lead to one score. If he would have missed that field goal, we were 100% getting a 15-yard flag. But of course, <laughs> we were, of course he made it. Of course. He can't let us have any fun. He yeah. have any fun, man. Yeah, and of course. We were always 1,000% getting flagged for that one. Could you Dude. imagine you two sprinting on the field? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your guys' relationship is sweet, too, yeah. you and Patrick. Uh, you know, right, right. An absolutely beautiful thing, and the boys will ask about it. But I think at the beginning, a lot of football people just thought it was fake. Like, they thought they were getting worked. Like, you know, they were like, this is, yeah. bull this is bullshit, this is bullshit. But now, I think people can't help but realize Travis is phenomenal at football. Mm -hmm. This guy's everything that we would like be a football player. And he's in love. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Guys in love. It's, yeah. I think that's why everybody's coming back. I think you were hated for a it's bit. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? And and hopefully everybody realizes that uh, we're just uh, we're two people in a relationship uh, supporting each other and having fun with it, man. It's it's nothing more than that. And uh, how, how much the world wants to paint the paint the picture and uh, make us the enemy, um, we just have fun with it, and we uh, we enjoy every single bit of it. And sure enough, I I, I love it when Taylor comes and supports me and. Um, and enjoys the game with the fam and friends. Uh, it's been it's been nothing but a uh, but just a wonderful year, man. You guys hear the hate though, huh? You and Taylor both. I assume you hear, hear people bitching. Do you like? Do you say why do these people? Why are these people? Is there any of those by you guys? Or because I assume she's <laughs> dealt with this forever, right? I assume she's uh, yeah, she's dealt with it forever, and we hear it, but we hardly ever talk about it. It's uh, it's nothing to even talk about. Nothing to really bring up. How long was that flight? Where'd you go see that concert at? Uh, Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. <sighs> On the bye, what, what, eight, eight, nine. You're all by yourself on that eight thing. Eight or nine. You're all by yourself. What's on that? You're all by yourself on that plane. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was just hanging there, just popped in a few movies and put my feet up. As it enjoyed, enjoyed the ride and then enjoyed the show and enjoyed some Argentinian food, some empanadas. Oh, Ooh. empanada! Love the empanada. <laughs> all I thought about was you being on that plane by yourself because I'm on a plane for an hour and a half by myself and I'm just like. I'm with me too much right now. I, I, need to, I, I should not be doing that. You're a much different human than I, obviously. Speaking of the guy that just walked in, Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Travis, you talked about talking with Charles and Menahue and saying how, you know, like offensively, like, hey, we need to kind of have just a, a little more grit. We got to figure out ways to win these games. And then recently there was a quote from Mahomes, and he basically said, like, hey, I, I need to, to learn how to play differently this year given how good the defense is. Was there was there any conversation between you two and you knowing like, hey, statistically my numbers might not look the same this year, but we are going to have to change the way we play on offense because, like you mentioned, we have everyone we need here to go play in a Super Bowl. It just might look a little bit differently than it has in the past. That's a, and that's a great point. I'll, I'll say this. I don't know if it was ever actually specifically talked about. It was kind of like how the season was going. It kind of just built, and we all just learned – it together and uh, the expectations that we set for ourselves is to score every single time we have the ball and sure enough history's told us before Pat Mahomes can score at any point in the game as fast as he can so not having that success it makes you feel like you're out of it but in reality we were in every single game we were playing and uh, we had to find that grit to be able to refocus have the right momentum have the right mentality to finish those games make those plays at the end of the game knowing it has been pretty all day um, I think that having that understanding of no matter where we're at at the end of the game, if we're in it, our mentality has to be we're too good to 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 let it slip, and we got to put the hammer down and 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 you know just make those big those big plays at the end. People gave up on you, man, throughout the year. Oh yeah, I was making a lot of excuses for you guys. Like, uh, <laughs> I was making a lot of excuses out here. It was windy, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It was, it was windy. Was sick. I love you for that, Pat. I love you for that. And it was, you knew what it was. We just had to, you know, we just had to figure it out, man. We just had to figure it out. Well, I want to let you know, though. No, you don't have to. I have to. <laughs> I picked uh -oh. both. I picked Baltimore's special weekend. No, listen, I get it, man. That team had a lot of juice. That team had a lot of juice. They were 
The bank is a hostile environment. Yeah. The bank's mm-hmm. not, you know, they were talking about bringing Ray Lewis back yeah. and, yep. and Ed Reed before the game to kind of so build that toughness, yeah. you know. Yep. And then uh, in the third or fourth quarter, they bring out T. Sizzle to some M&M or to some, uh, to some 50 Cent oh. uh, playing. Ooh. And it was just like, wow, this, you know, it was an electric feeling for him. But, um, you know, as you say, you say it best, baby. The Chiefs is still the Chiefs. <laughs> And uh, and we're going back to the Super Bowl for a reason, baby. The Chiefs is still the Chiefs, aren't they? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, big yeah. time. Yeah. How did I forget that? The Chiefs is actually maybe even the better Chiefs than they've ever been. Yeah. It's your quote. It's your quote, Pat. I know. I know! That's why I wasn't able to celebrate. I wasn't because I, like, I forgot. I forgot, Trav. That's 100% on me. Hey, you sound awesome anytime you have a microphone, though, up on the stage. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, those. I, I appreciate the fact that you take those over, too, because there's some people that are too timid. They don't talk enough. They're expecting the question person to do it. You just say, hey, listen, been here before. This is my show. Okay, we, <laughs> yeah. we, we, know, we know what we're doing here. Let's just go ahead and get the place going. This is celebration, and there's no person better, I think, Hey, are you always good vibes? I mean, not when you're fighting kickers before the game, but like locker room, I assume, locker room. Everything. All day, every day, baby. Yeah. I'm, I'm living living life to the fullest, man. Absolutely. Every single day, the, the glass is full. It's not even half full. It's full, man. That thing is, it's just, I, I'm, I'm oozing good energy, man. I, you know, I had a coach, uh, Butch Jones, say one one time, and it just registered for me. It's a very simple quote. It's uh, either you're a, uh, you're fueling people or you're draining people. Either you're a fountain or you're a drain in life. And uh, I I just love being that fountain of life for everybody and bringing the en- energy and setting that tone of good vibes, man. Um, and that's just how I live life, baby. That's awesome. Hell yeah. With well, that being said, the Chiefs is still the Chiefs. You know why? Because Kelsey's still Kelsey. Even though everybody was saying you were changing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody was saying you were going to change. He's an Ohio folk. Mm-hmm. He ain't going to change. Can't do it. The change of the team, though, I think, is on the other side of the ball, which D Butt has a question. Yeah, for you guys have some ebbs and flows, obviously, offensively, and you get a bunch of the headlines Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. But on that other side with Spags, and I know you practice against him a ton. Speaking of Pat, too, shout out to him. Uh, putting on for the dad bots too. But uh, Spag, you see him a lot, <laughs> practice, training camp. You, you, know, you know nothing about that. Yeah. yeah. Darius knows yeah, nothing about that. Don't say that, that D-Butt. Like, You're that. not a liar. Shout out to my Ironically, bad friends. Though, I, was, I was listening to the show. Ironically, the quarterbacks do bring in about three boxes a dozen glazed donuts every Friday. See? <laughs> see? So, I love that. Okay, see? so a lot of common. Uh, <laughs> teammates. Good teammates. Good teammates. Hey, but why, why is it so tough to, uh, to beat Spags, especially in these big games? I feel like he's just putting on the master class. Obviously, Josh Allen. Uh, Lamar Jackson, and now going against Brock Purdy in this, uh, this offense with 49ers. Why is it so tough to beat him, and especially with his adjustments? Man, uh, Spags is going to challenge you mentally. And uh, uh, as an offense, you want to catch a rhythm. And I just I just haven't seen a team catch that rhythm against uh, Coach Spags' defenses. And obviously, it, he does a great job of, uh, of challenging everybody mentally. But I think, you know, the, the true test is to, to Brett Veach and – the guys that are bringing in, they're bringing in oh, to yeah. that defense because we got we got guys at linebacker that sometimes are playing half field safety. They, we got guys that are playing D line that are dropping to the flat, making plays in the flat. You know, guys are interchangeable, and when you have that, you can you can really screw up a team's momentum and a team's uh, rhythm throughout the uh, the the day. And uh, sure enough. Um, it's been no no more prevalent than than this uh, playoff. Yeah, Spag said the uh, other day that everybody on the field has a high football intellect. Mm-hmm. Normally, you have like one guy oh, yeah. or two guys. He said all eleven guys have a high football IQ, so they're able to do a oh, bunch yeah. of stuff. It's beautiful. You got that's why the Chiefs is not only still the Chiefs, but it feels like Eli. They, Eli they, was kind of talking about it, mm-hmm. and Antonio Pierce and talking about the switching those blitzes. Like he was playing for Spags at that point, and yeah. what Travis talking about, like Justin Reed, the shit he's doing out there. Obviously, McDuffie, uh, Snead has been the best corner in the league, I think, in my opinion. Bolton, like all these guys, just been doing their job. So the Chiefs is better than Chiefs oh, ever no. been. Whoa. Oh, Boy. no. <laughs> uh, Diggs has last question for you here, Travis. Yeah, Trav, uh, you watch the show, so you know this is a journalistic show. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to put you on the spot. This is a question that I just have to ask you. And it's not even for me. It's for a huge section of the Internet that wants to know, will your GQ, handsome, stylish, stylish ass – be on the red carpet of the Grammys this weekend, or is that something that can't happen because, you know, you're Uh, playing in the Super Bowl? I wish I could go support Taylor at the Grammys and uh, watch her win every single award that that she's nominated for, but I think uh, I I got got practice on Sunday, (laughs) or uh, I think Sunday's a travel day. Is it Saturday or Sunday? I know I got practice Saturday, but Sunday's a travel day. Unfortunately, 
I got to get ready for this big old Super Bowl that we got in a week. I can't wait for Entertainment Tonight to post. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> the only person in Taylor's life that won't be able to make it to the Grammys is Travis <laughs> because he is quoted as saying, focused on still winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, that's right. Them learning about football has been fantastic, Trav. We appreciate you, buddy. Have a great week, and uh, thank you for stopping by, bro. Best show on TV, baby. Love you guys, man. Hey, we love you too, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, Travis. Travis.